Stumbling on photographs. Asking for sympathy. Can anybody hear me? I travel down the morning lane. Pushing the basket. Pushing the basket. That song right there was the creation as a result of seeing a lot of people sitting on top of the world, having everything materially. When I was a kid, the issue was for me to not want what everybody else had. See, I heard the thing about keeping up with the Joneses, and I didn't want to be one of those people. But you were a Jones. Shut up. Um, the other day when we had our so-called wildfire, and it came as close as my property, there were several things that would have had to happen in order for it to reach here. And it looked like all of those things were happening all at once. What I noticed is I said to myself, don't go back inside and get nothing. Those were my words to myself. When I saw, only when I saw that the fire wasn't coming across the street right away, then I went inside and I grabbed the computer and my tablet. Other than that, that junk would have burned up. Because, like I said, the issue wasn't running inside to get something, to worry about something material. Uh, the amount of stuff I have here is over $100,000 worth of equipment and electronic stuff and stuff I haven't even taken out of boxes. That's just junk because I can get all that junk back. Now, I want to talk to all of you, if you guys give me a second. Excuse me, young man. That song right there, I stumbled on a photograph. I remember the song by Minnie Ripperton. I stumbled on a photograph, kind of made me laugh. Took me way back, back down memory lane. I feel the happiness, I feel the pain. Where am I? Back down memory lane. Inspiration for that song. But it's also the actual looking back at one's past. There are a lot of people who had their homes, their cars, their lives taken from them. And all they can do is look to the past. You gotta stop looking behind, ladies and gentlemen. You gotta understand everything you had before, you can get again. You don't have to try to get it. See, when you try, you never achieve anything. You have to set a goal and you have to stick to your goal. You have to stop being procrastinators. All right. Let's talk about consultations with Eon. Because people need to know this. Look, ladies and gentlemen, as many of you have come to understand, I will talk about just about everything. But... As I told a group of people this morning, I am not going to sit up here to help you to get $100 billion in your pocket. I, I've already done that. But not to get $100 billion in your pocket. You're going to pay $550 for that? No, that's not what this is about. I'm not here to teach you how to come up. I am here to help you solve your problems. Will I talk about money orders and all of that, promissory notes and all that? I don't have a problem talking about that. But please, when I tell you you have to do your own research, I'm serious about that. I am not here to do the research for you or be your research tool. Look, it's a consultation. It's not a mentorship. It's not a teacher instructional thing. Look, and I keep saying look because I'm on medication right now. Sleeping pills. The, the one that I talk about all the time. Alterel. Took it about two hours ago, so I will be 99 in a minute. It's only 617, but I have two consults tomorrow, and I have an admission that I'm going to give them what they deserve, the best of me. That's why I'm getting my rest tonight, so that I am not fatigued or exhausted or distracted. 
they deserve the best. Consults usually last about two and a half to three hours. Why? Because it's a lot of information. I can't just give you the information. I have to show you how to arrive at the information so that you'll understand. Because if you don't understand how you got to the information and you just got information, you're just going to be parroting information like so many other people out there. And that's why you're not going to get anywhere. Because you have to know the stuff. It's okay because I show you everything. Everything is recorded. I show you how I get to every step. Even with the training of ChatGPT. Everybody must understand ChatGPT is not a person. It's not a creature. He doesn't want to be a little boy. He's not Pinocchio. It's a language model. But because it's a language model and they're trying to teach it to be more human-like with its responses, then that's why I call it a liar when it lies. That's why I call it what I call it. That's why I call it a moron and an idiot. Now, before it used to, you know, caution me about using those type of words and I would have to check it. It's no longer doing that. Now, I'm not doing that to embarrass it, to disrupt it or anything else. I'm doing it because they've trained it to lie. But the best tool in the world that they could have brought us is something like ChatGPT. Because it now helps you guys when you go to court. Somebody asked me about a trust. You can get ChatGPT to create a trust for you. Somebody asked me about business proposals. You can get ChatGPT to produce that for you. There are tools. During the consult, just ask me, and I'll show you how to get it to do it the correct way. Not just give you that bubblegum stuff that gives you off the bat. That's easy. There was, um, we're going to just think of someone out of the blue. The person who had to go to court, whom the court told them that they had to show proof, that they had insurance. I just had a young lady go to the DMV yesterday. Ladies and gentlemen, it's called Surety Bonds Direct. Surety Bonds with an S, direct.com. Surety Bonds Direct.com. You can get a bond for your automobile. You get it at the level that your state requires for minimum insurance. They last anywhere from three to five years. That's enough proof of insurance if you get pulled over. You must understand, it is liability insurance. So what you have to show is proof that you have enough liability coverage. You don't have to have insurance by the title insurance, you know, where it says insurance. You don't have to have that. The law doesn't require that. It says that you must have liability coverage. And so you get title insurance. Oh, by the way, you can also use that title insurance to sue the DMV because they never gave you the title to your vehicle. Now, I want you to pay attention to this. Those of you who are dealing with property and someone trying to claim your property belongs to them, such as the United States or your state that you live in, that's why you're paying property taxes, because that's your rent for living in your house. Okay, you really must understand that. Remember, you cannot be taxed on your property. Pay attention. You really need to pay attention to this. The right to property, they cannot convert a right to a privilege, and charging you taxes on a right, it makes it a privilege. So you really need to understand what's going on. It's not your property. But you can challenge that because any ownership by you or state of your property means that there is some type of an agreement out there because they didn't get ownership automatically. They got ownership through something, and you can bring that to light by suing the state charging you property tax. Well, that goes to child care and children and schools and, and police department and fire station. No, it doesn't. My property tax doesn't go to any of that. You cannot tax me on my property to support that stuff. That's not mandatory, but you can tax me on use of buying junk food because it's not life sustaining. It's not a necessity, but you cannot charge me taxes on a necessity. You know better than that. You can tell that to the other public. The, 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 that public thing, that republic and the other public, you can tell it to them. They'll believe that junk, but there's no way in the world you're going to tell me that you're going to charge me taxes. Pay attention. On my property? Who gave you control over my property? So that you can sit up here and extort money out of me for living on my own property. No, that's called a racket. That's what they do in places like New York. Make you pay for running your company, your business, and then you got to pay some landlord 
who isn't even your landlord, but he's just a gang member. He's just mafia to operate your business. That's what the state is doing to each of you. Now, of course, operating a business is a commercial venture. Congress has the right to regulate commerce, according to them. But, ladies and gentlemen, private business, they have no jurisdiction over private business. So, during the consult, I give information to people based on their concerns. I listen very carefully to what they're saying so as I can articulate to myself what it is that they are needing. Sometimes I give them things and they, what are you talking about this for? That's not what I asked you for. And then at the end, oh, okay, I see I see why you did that. Okay, that was kind of smart. No, 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 I understand. We go through that a lot. I've been doing this for a while, ladies and gentlemen. I've been doing this type of stuff since about eight years old. I'm not joking. Any of my friends that grew up with me, they will tell you that this is all I used to do. I used to spend hours on the telephone with people, helping them resolve problems, either in school or out of school, even adults coming to me. I'm not joking. I'm not kidding. I'm not trying to make myself look out to be something that I am not. I was just talking to someone today, letting them know that when I was 16 years old, I worked for the Army Corps of Engineers in, their, in the federal building. The Army Corps of Engineers was my employer, and they had me helping them with policy writing for the building. A 16-year-old asking me about the wording and what wording would be proper. Go ahead. Her name was Verdi. I forgot. Verdi was, I think Verdi's last name was Jones, if I'm not mistaken. She was my supervisor. Okay. A 16-year-old. Now, I'm not saying, they, they all knew what I was capable of. They all, knew, well, they all thought they knew what I was capable of. So did Miss Maxine Waters. They saw something. They knew. But even the census, I didn't know anybody who was running the census. I just applied. And they made me a supervisor at the age of 16. I'm not proud of these things. I'm only highlighting that I've been doing this for a while. Making a 16-year-old the supervisor of 60 adults? Yes, I was the supervisor of 60 people for the census. That was the group I was the supervisor of. They, they did that to me. I didn't do that to me. I didn't ask for that. That's what they chose to do. Now, hey, I'm not knocking the people who did it. Um, the census is not the, the people who ran it back then were not the most intelligent creatures on the planet. They just wanted to get it done. They were getting paid the big bucks, and they just needed somebody who was going to do it. And they saw that most of the people who I was supervising weren't going to do the job. But I, they knew, they saw. Why? Because I was staying out until 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night, knocking on people's doors with the census every night because the group that I was with wasn't finishing the territory. So that's what they saw. They saw that I don't give up and I don't walk away and I get the job done. So that's what people can expect with the console. If I don't know something, I'm not going to tell it to you. But I do believe that there is a way out of every situation. You know, somebody told me that they got a couple of frivolous letters from the IRS. Ladies and gentlemen, the way to get rid of a frivolous letter from the IRS is to respond to them immediately, saying, I'm not understanding what you're saying here. If it's a frivolous filing, what part of it is frivolous? Or do you just get to make an arbitrary determination? So if that is the case, what I need to do is I need to appeal your decision. And so you ask for a hearing. Now, if you want to drop it, then you simply tell them, oh, I'm sorry, here's an amended filing. I'm going ahead and canceling the previous filing. So uh, there's no more frivolous filing. So you can take the threat of a uh, fine and, you know, stick it where you want to stick it. Ladies and gentlemen, if you respond within 30 days to a frivolous filing notice and you withdraw the original filing, then you don't have nothing to worry about. It's when you sit up there and hold your guns and want to keep going back and forth with them. That's when you get the frivolous filing. If you ask for a hearing, no more frivolous filing. These are real simple administrative things because the IRS has to follow the Administrative Procedures Act. Okay, just that simple. Hey, have you had a bank say, I'm going to close your account down? For, because we don't have to give you a reason. 
<laughs> Look, that's the dumbest thing in the world. Of course, they have to give you a reason. It's your account. They don't have the right to close your account. That belongs to you. It doesn't belong to them. They're just custodians. So how do you handle the idiots when they tell you that they're going to close your account? It's real simple. You sit up there and demand an appeal. And you contact the CFPB and you report them. Why? Well, ladies and gentlemen, you may not believe this because, well, I, technically I know you're not going to believe this because you didn't know. The banks are under the Administrative Procedures Act. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that they can't just shut your account down because they're an administrative agency. They must give you the right to appeal their decision. So they can't just shut it down because they feel like it because that's a violation of the Administrative Procedures Act and you can't waive that right because it's a right to redress. So they have to give you a right to an appeal and you have to demand an appeal of their decision. Okay, well, once we shut the account down, I did the same thing already. They shut down one of my accounts just because they felt like it, and I appealed it immediately. And they opened the account, another account, but the account was opened back up. And all of the stuff that I had programmed and set up is already linked to the new account. So don't tell me what I can't do. All right, they must follow the Administrative Procedures Act. Because they are not making accommodations for my disability, well, I am um, hammering them with the CFPB. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the CFPB, they may, not, they may not be the greatest in the world, but these idiots do have to respond to the CFPB. And that's how you use that evidence against them in court, which is what I'm getting ready to do with Wells Fargo and a couple of other companies. It turns out that the banks are purposely, intentionally, and deliberately blocking my access. They've created a profile for me where they literally are denying me access and so now I have to go after them. So that $400 billion lawsuit couldn't have come at a better time. And this is the other thing. I told everybody about the pain I've been in with my foot. Well, I'm realizing that it's the slippers. I wear, I don't wear, they're not actually slippers, but they are slippers. But they're not slippers, they're sandals. And I wear sandals, but I don't wear them with the back strap. So I use them as slippers. Well, can't do that. I got to. These are so worn out that I've worn them out. And so now I have to switch to the other pair. I have another pair that I'm going to start wearing, and that should help me with the um, ankle and foot problems that I've been having as of late. I only realized today, because of all the walking I had to do the other day, trying to save my dogs, uh, I only realized where the pain was, and so I'm going to take care of that. All right. Let's go ahead and take care of that thing about property. Senate document number 43 of the 74th Congress. Senate document number 43, just Google it. It says that all property is owned by the state. Any so-called ownership is only by mere user. And then it says by the authority or by the grace of the state. Excuse me, that's a lie. And now you can call them on it because they actually said that that was the case. There's nothing in the Constitution or anything else that gives them the right to own your property. But remember, that's all it is. You turn over ownership of your property by registering it with the county recorder. You can register your property without using the county recorder. You can register your property with several other means. I'm not going to tell you. Y'all got to figure this out. Lord have mercy. I, I got to be very careful because I tell y'all something. Next thing you know, y'all sitting up there trying to take over the White House. Okay? I, I ain't trying to go for nothing like that. I'm trying to get you guys to think for yourself. Okay? I'm trying to get you to think. But you really do, really, really, really do need to call them on this ownership of your property. Those of you who are making payments to banks, the banks did not loan you money. They loaned you credit. So pay them back in credits. Y'all really need to pay attention. Credits are dollars. So they have the same dollar sign. Pay attention. Your promissory note said you were going to pay them back in dollars. It didn't say Federal Reserve notes. It said dollars. Well, credits are federal. Credits are dollars. 
they are equal to every dollar, equal power for every dollar. Go back and read Joint Resolution, June 5th, 1933. So pay off your note. And if they argue with you, say, let's go to court because that's what the lawsuit is about, people. The $400 billion lawsuit is about that right there. You already been paid. And when we challenge the debt, oh, by the way, the Fair Debt Collections Practice Act, those of you who are helping people with debts, let me give this to you. The Fair Debt Collections Practices Act says quite specifically that if a debtor challenges the validity of the debt, then they're to supply the owner's name, the owner's address, and the amount of the debt. But if they challenge any other portion of the debt, they have to verify it. And the only person who can verify it is the original owner. And they don't do it by supplying you with copies of the paperwork and the owner's address and name. That's for validation. Verification doesn't incorporate the owner's name and the address of the owner and, and uh, outstanding debt. Verification incorporates the fact that they have to show accounting showing that the debt is legitimate and where it arrived from and how it got there. Well, that means they have to show proof of funding. So start going after the phrase, any other portion of the debt. That's what you want to focus on. Don't focus on validating a debt. Focus on any other portion of the debt being disputed. And then start disputing any other portion of the debt. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we took this time to talk about debts, talking about consult with Eon, and talking about a little bit of fire. Oh, and let's not forget about our stumbling on a photograph so we're gonna get on out of here because i'm tired y'all okay y'all have a good day okay memory lane he's looking forward and never back again y'all